This tutorial is going to allow you to install PyroSim, a Python robot simulator. Once installed, PyroSim will allow you to do things like create virtual environments and virtual robots to behave in. The first thing we're going to do is create a Linux virtual machine that runs inside of your Windows operating system. As you can say, see, I run the Mac operating system, but that's not going to matter. What we're going to do here is create a virtual machine which runs inside your operating system. In my case, it's going to run inside of a Mac. In your case, it's going to run inside of Windows. And inside that virtual machine, we're going to install an operating system for that machine. And the operating system we're going to install is Linux. The next thing we're going to do is download an image of Linux onto our desktop. This is a relatively large file, so it might take a few minutes to download. The next thing we're going to do is download and run our virtual machine, which is going to be called VirtualBox. You're going to be downloading a VirtualBox that's going to sit on top of your Windows machine. However, remember that I have a Mac OS X operating system, so I'm going to download the VirtualBox for OS X. Again, this may take a little while to download. Now, let's install VirtualBox. Again, this might be different for you since you're installing it under Windows. Now we'll follow the installation wizard and select all the default options. On my Mac machine, I can now see that I have VirtualBox installed here. Let's run it. When you first run VirtualBox, you'll see that the list of virtual machines is empty. VirtualBox allows you to create virtual machines. We're going to create just one. Let's start by clicking New. And we select that we want to create a virtual box that has Linux installed on it. So we're going to create a Linux virtual box. And again, we're going to select all the default options. And we now have a Linux virtual box ready to go. Next, we need to tell our virtual box which image of Linux we want it to use. So we click on settings of the virtual machine, click on storage, empty, and this little CD DVD icon here. And I now need to choose a virtual optical disk file. Um, basically, what I need to do is find that Linux, uh, find that Linux image that I downloaded uh, in step two. So on a Mac, I can just search for that file directly, and here it is. On a Windows machine, you might need to navigate to a downloads directory and just find that file and open it. Now let's run our virtual machine, and inside of that virtual machine, we're going to install Linux. So I double-clicked on it. That opens the virtual machine. You can see the virtual machine is running Linux, and I'm now going to follow the steps inside of this virtual machine to install Linux. So everything that happens inside of this window is happening inside the virtual machine. Everything that's happening on my desktop, this is my actual machine.
Okay, I'm going to install Ubuntu Linux on my virtual machine. And again, choose the default options. So the virtual machine is now installing uh, Linux, and depending on the speed of your machine, this may take uh, a few minutes. You can see I can't actually see the buttons here, so I can resize the window that looks into my virtual machine. And continue on. I now need to name this uh, virtual machine and pick a password. Uh, remember this password, you're going to have to use it later. And for simplicity's sake, I'm just going to log into Linux when I start up this virtual machine automatically. Okay, this step might may take a few minutes. Okay, so now that we've installed Linux on our virtual machine, we restart the virtual machine and we should see Linux start up. See here, it just asked to press enter, just focus the window and click enter. And we'll see Ubuntu Linux start up. Okay, I'm just going to resize my virtual machine here, the window onto my virtual machine, so we can follow the instructions and work inside of the virtual machine. Okay, so here's our virtual machine and Linux running inside it. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is open a terminal window and type a few commands. Uh, most things in Linux are done through the terminal window. So I'm going to click back on my virtual machine, right click and select open terminal. And now I've got a terminal box that I can work uh, inside of. The first thing I'm going to do is install uh, some software and you do that by typing the super user does or do, super user do, and we're going to install a particular program called git. I need to supply my password, which I just typed in. And now Linux is installing the program called Git. Uh, it's asking uh, to use some additional space. The default is yes, so I just can hit Y or hit Enter, and it will install Git. The next thing we're going to do is download PyroSim into our virtual machine. I'm going to click on the terminal window and type clear, just so we have a clear uh, terminal window. And I'm now going to use git to clone or make a copy of PyroSim, which can be found at http github my account on github and PyroSim, which is stored in my account at github. Okay, so we just installed git, now we're downloading uh, PyroSim onto our virtual machine. Let's click on our terminal window, type clear to clear it. Now we're going to install some additional software that will support the graphics of PyroSim. Let's start with making sure everything is up to date. Now let's install some essential development tools or build tools. Finally, let's install FreeGlut, which is a uh, graphics package for uh, Linux. So we've set up our virtual box, we've opened a terminal window, and we've installed 
uh, some software. We've downloaded PyroSim. The next thing we need to do is install PyroSim uh, itself. So let's go back to the terminal window. Let's type clear to clear the window. And we need now, need now to enter the PyroSim directory. We do so by typing cd or change directory PyroSim. We're now in the PyroSim directory and we need to build or install PyroSim. The first thing it's doing is unpacking and building ODE, or Open Dynamics Engine. ODE is the physics engine that lies underneath PyroSim. And when it finishes installing ODE, the physics engine, it's going to move on to uh, building or installing PyroSim itself, the robot simulator. Again, depending on your, the speed of your machine, this step might take a few minutes. Okay, so now PyroSim should be installed. In order to make sure that PyroSim actually is installed, we're going to run, using Python, an existing uh, Python program that creates an existing simulation. So let's go back to the terminal window, type Python, type the name of the Python program, and then hit enter. And as the name implies, we should see an empty, I'm going to run it again, you should see an empty simulation. Okay, uh, in future projects, you're going to be creating Python programs that create increasingly sophisticated environments and robots. So we're going to need a text editor to create your Python programs in. And we're going to use a relatively simple one called Genie. So let's go back to our terminal window, type clear just to clear things out. And we are now going to install a new piece of software called Genie called Genie, text editor. And once this finish, finishes, we should have Genie, the text editor, editor, installed in our virtual machine. Okay, let's type clear again now. And we're now going to open demo the demo program and inspect it using Genie. You'll see that before I hit enter, I add an ampersand. This means that it's going to start up a new program, but allow us to work in that program, but also to come back to the terminal and work in the terminal as well. So when I hit enter, Genie starts up, and we can now make changes to the Python code. We can then save our program. Here's Genie down here. Here's the terminal window. So we can click here to go back to the terminal window, and we can now run our modified Python program.